Welcome back to the South Texan News Desk. As always, I'm your host, Tom Miller. In campus news, the Flourish Esports team's Madden 21 tournament will be taking place on Wednesday, October 7th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Now, the registrations for that did close Friday, October 2nd. However, Madden isn't Flourish's only specialty. Their next tournament will be for FIFA 21 on November 11th and we'll have more concrete sign-up details as that date approaches. For more information on Team Flourish, you can email them at flourish at tamu.edu. In world news, we first begin in the U.S., taking a look at the condition of President Trump following his positive COVID-19 diagnosis on Friday. The president is categorized as a high-risk individual considering his age of 74 but he has repeatedly stated that he feels remarkably better. President Trump was flown to Walter Reed Military Hospital on Friday and has been conducting business from there since then. His team of doctors, headed by physician Dr. Sean Conley, indicates that the team remains cautiously optimistic about Trump's condition. Trump has said that he wants to get back on the campaign trail soon and his supporters have made sure to fill in the president's absence by holding their own rallies. It'll be interesting to see how the situation changes the election as a whole, especially given the standing of COVID-19 as a contentious issue in this election. Meanwhile, in the United Kingdom, following a supposed technical glitch with tracking software, over 12,000 new cases were confirmed on Saturday. This spurred Prime Minister Boris Johnson to address the issue, which he did in an interview with the BBC. Among Johnson's key remarks was that the British government was taking a balanced approach in keeping the British economy stable and protecting the British people. This creates a larger question about how coronavirus is being handled in the UK. Taking a moderate approach to addressing COVID, rather than setting out a definitive strategy, has brought new remarks from Johnson's critics. Many of those remarks have called for the government to actually publish definitive guidance, such as hard guidelines on lockdown criteria. If the people remain unsatisfied with how Johnson's party is handling COVID, such as believing that they're not actually equipped to handle it as evidenced by a lack of concrete doctrine, it could easily cripple the party's power in future elections. Next, we bring you an update on the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Ganja, Azerbaijan's second largest city has been subjected to heavy artillery shelling, as has Stepanakert, the capital of the Nagorno Karabakh region. Now, there's more developments than that, but frankly, we don't really know how truthful the rest of it is. For example, self proclaimed authorities in Nagorno Karabakh have claimed they shelled Ganja's military airport but Azerbaijan is adamant that none of Ganja's military sites have actually taken any hits. The death toll is also reported to have reached 220 people, but since those numbers have really only come from Azerbaijan and Armenia, there's no independent source to verify whether those numbers are accurate or, as many fear, much higher. It may be that both sides are trying to downplay their losses and over-exaggerating their successes, a common tactic in wartime reporting. Now, it's probably to try and get the upper hand in possible ceasefire negotiations that Russia, France, and the U.S. are trying to set up. The side with the least losses and is more likely to win will probably find a way to dominate any kind of ceasefire negotiation, regardless of the actual intent of those negotiations. Finally, we look at an interesting political situation in Belgium. Belgium's history of Dutch rule still has consequences today, and it's shown in Belgium's new coalition government, one that took 15 months to actually establish. Now, to provide some context, Belgium essentially has two regions. Wallonia in the south is mainly French-speaking and tends to lean politically left. The northern area, Flanders, is more Dutch-speaking and tends to lean politically right. The cultural differences inherent in these two areas have long been a point of contention, but the new government of Belgium could do much to accelerate those tensions. That's because the top two parties in the recent election cycle, the moderate NVA 
and the right-leaning Flemish interest aren't actually part of the new government, despite garnering the majority of votes. With this new government, made up of seven smaller Belgian political parties, the many are ruled by the few. Belgium's majority population is Flemish, not Wallonian, and the capital city of Brussels is also Flemish. Flanders also generates the majority of Belgium's wealth. All these factors come together to raise the question of whether greater forces were at work intent on establishing a left-leaning government in Belgium, regardless of how the actual population of Belgium voted to be governed. That's all we have for you this week. For more information on the goings-on here at Tamuk, check out the South Texan written right here at Tamuk, or check us out online at thesouthtexan.com. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at the South Texan.